All right, everybody, welcome to today's video. I am up here with my 74 Plymouth Barracuda project. I know it's been a number of months since I've actually given you guys any kind of a status update on the project, and unfortunately that's because there isn't been much to report. Uh, I've been busy with other projects and other activities to be able to come up here and work on the car and get things ready to bring into the garage. Plus with the weather uh, being winter time and dealing with some of the rain and with it being out here in outdoor storage, uh, it's definitely been muddy out here and so I haven't been wanting to come out here and work on it in the mud. Uh, and another reason why we haven't gotten into the garage yet is none of the wheels actually turn due to the fact that the brake pads and shoes have melted to the drums and the rotors and so that's what we're going to go and start trying to address today is knocking those loose so that way when we are ready to bring this car into the garage I can go ahead and just roll it in instead of trying to drag it in. Now that being said there hasn't been uh, no work being done at all on the project so uh, I have started going through my part stashes to see what I've got to go ahead and start putting this car together and I've so far I've gone through and found a freshly machined all prepped uh, 440 block uh, as well as a forge crank and a, a good set of 906 casting uh, heads for it and some other components to put the engine together. And then I've also went and found a 727 torque plate that I had. And so we'll go ahead and put those uh, engine and transmission together and get them in here uh, when the time comes. It'll be not the long-term solution because that is definitely a very heavy uh, drivetrain to have on the front of this thing. And we're gonna be long-term going with something much lighter. Uh, but in the meantime, it's something that I have that's not gonna cost me a lot of money to put together that will allow me to at least get the car on the road and do a shakedowns on it to get make sure everything's ready for when we do start taking this car to the track. We've also gone through and found the set of gauges that I'm gonna be using for this. I had bought a set of Mopar Performance uh, gauges from Autometer uh, that I was originally intending on sticking in the SRT4 in the A-pillar, but when I got the A-pillar molding that they use for the gauge pods, I wasn't happy with the quality of it, and it, so I decided not to put those gauges in the A-pillar. Instead, they're gonna go ahead and go in this car, and I do need to pick up a couple more gauges because I just got the oil pressure, water temperature, and voltage, and so I need to pick up the fuel level speedometer and the tachometer at the very least. So I'll be ordering those here soon because I don't want to find myself in a situation where I've got three gauges and the other gauges no, are no longer available to order. So we're going to go ahead and get those. Of course, that is way early in the project and I really don't need the gauges right now. But at the same time, I don't want to find myself in a situation where I've got half the gauge set and can't get the other gauge set. So we're just gonna go ahead and order the balance of those gauges so that way I have all of the gauges. And that way, when we do get time to the point where we're ready to put the interior in this car, which is definitely a long ways off because we still haven't even gotten the roof welded onto this thing. And uh, that's really a lot of stuff that I've been finding. I also went and talked to DMV about paperwork and things that we can do uh, in order to get a title for it. And uh, we looks like we've got a couple of options to go forward with and check out. So I will be uh, investigating those further. And as I get more information on those and get a title for this car, I'll go ahead and share that with you for those out there that are trying to figure out how to do that with cars that you might have in your possession as well. And uh, so keep an eye out for that in future videos as well. But that's enough of me rambling on about the lack of status uh, there is of this car. Let's go ahead and start diving in and pulling these wheels off and see if we can get them to start actually rotating. All right, so first things first, we gotta pull this wheel off of here, go ahead and get it, the brake caliper exposed. And the good news is I know this wheel is actually gonna come off because we went ahead and put all four of these wheels on the car when we went and picked it up because the wheels that were on it were of course all the tires were melted off of it and we needed to get it at least somewhat off the ground. And so we went ahead and put these wheels on it. So at least the first step is gonna be pretty simple pulling the wheels off. So let's get the car up in the air and then we can go ahead and start pulling the wheel.
All right, so the brake calipers on these cars are held on with two 916 bolts that are up here at the top, or on the back rather. So we're just gonna go ahead and spray them with some penetrating oil to help. How much help there, the penetrating oil is gonna be, I'm not sure, but it's a start. And I'm shocked, it actually, the first one has actually come loose. All right. This wire. And that's one of the steel wires from the inside of the tire. You would think after all of these years, I would know my righty tighty from my lefty Lucy, but even I mix them up backwards once in a while. So it's all right, they both came loose. Go ahead, get these bolts out of here. All right, one down. One to go. All right, got both the bolts out. And of course, the caliper stuck. We'll go ahead and get some tools to convince it. All right, got my trusty hammer and pry bar. Let's see what we can do. All right, got the caliper off, pads out, and we have a wheel that turns. All right, one down, three to go. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and tackle the right rear, pull that wheel off, and work on pulling this drum off. I'm expecting the drum to be harder to remove than the front caliper was, just because it's got a larger contact patch on the shoes. And so we'll go ahead and see what we got. There we go. So now the fun begins with pulling this, this brake drum off. So normally the brake drum should just slide right off. As you can see, it's a little, little loose. So we're just gonna go ahead, smack it with the hammer a bit. We got that off. And unfortunately the axle's still not turning. 
So I'm not sure. That tells me one of two things. Either this has a sure grip differential and uh, it won't turn unless I get the other one free or there's something locked up in the differential from the fire or whatever. So that's unfortunate, but that's all right. At least we got the drum off and um, we'll go ahead, put the wheel back on without the drum. Uh, so that way when I do get the other side off, we'll know for sure. Now, unfortunately, I have run out of time today to work on the 74 CUDA project, and so I'm not gonna be able to further diagnose what's going on with this rear axle, why it's not rotating. We'll have to save that for another day in another video. But we did get at least some progress moving today on the car. We got the front passenger caliper off, we got the rear drum on the passenger side off. So we're getting closer to being able to get this car rolling, and that way we can get it into the garage and start diving into it and getting this back on the road. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, we are still making some progress in other areas on the cars, going and hunting down parts that I've currently got in inventory, as well as working on the paperwork on getting it titled and registered. So it's not all for naught. I mean, it's definitely going at a snail's pace. Unfortunately, it's not going at the speed that I would like to, but as I've said in other videos, there is a lot going on this year and I've got a lot of things in the works as well and that are also taking up a fair amount of my time, which is detracting from me to be able to give the CUDA the priority that it deserves. Uh, but as I also mentioned early on when I picked up this car, this is a long-term project, so you're going to want to stick around and see how things are progressing. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Give me that thumbs up. It helps me out tremendously with that YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you want to keep up to date, up to date with my future uploads, uh, especially updates on this project here, go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell as well. So that way YouTube will keep you up to date of all my future uploads. And as always, guys, I will see you the next video.